Hey guys, it's Tim here, and sorry I've been gone for a little bit. Life's been pretty crazy the last couple of weeks, and sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So thank you guys for being patient with me, and I'm excited today because I'm bringing you a review for Solo, a Star Wars story. Uh, I'm gonna be giving my non-spoiler thoughts here at the beginning of the video, and at the end we'll have some spoiler talk. So are you guys ready to get into this? I am, so if there's like zero viewers, I guess I'm just some guy sitting on my couch talking to my camera, but I'd like to think you guys are out there, so uh, please comment. Anyways, here we go. It's well documented on this channel that I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I wasn't necessarily looking forward to Solo very much. And you can see my more detailed thoughts for why I wasn't very excited in this video right here, so check it out. Overall, Solo A Star Wars Story was a movie that I enjoyed quite a bit, and uh, if you wanted to just stop the review right there, you probably could, there are my thoughts on it, but we'll go more into detail. I thought that the lead actor, Alden Ehrenreich, his portrayal of Han Solo was better than the trailers led me to believe, because in the trailers they would never really show him talk. Um, and that was a problem I had, because I was, I was getting kind of nervous, I was like, are we gonna have a situation on our hands where they just cast the wrong guy and they'd already filmed like half the film and they were just like, uh-oh. And so they were trying to hide it from us. Uh, but no, in the movie he's surprisingly good. Um, he doesn't 100% sell me on him being Han Solo, Harrison Ford's character, all the time in the movie. But there are times where I, I am sold, where I'm like, wow, this guy is a young Han Solo. Um, and it's those parts in the movie where it, it really kind of takes it to an, like another level and it really shines. Um, so watch out for those parts in the movie and I bet you'll know them when you see them. Another standout thing for me in this movie that I should have been expecting, but I just kind of forgot that it was probably gonna be as integral to this film as it was, was Chewbacca. Um, and getting to see the backstory of Han and Chewie uh, getting to me and how their friendship formed was just so awesome. Like, they nailed Chewie in this movie. And I think out of all the classic characters in the movie that they paid homage to and tried to, to respect, they respected Chewie the, the most. They honored him the most because I think that uh, the character of Chewbacca in this movie, even though I guess he's a little bit easier to write, he doesn't really have any lines, he just does his like wookie bark growl thing all the time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but he just seems exactly the way that he should. He seems like the same character that you meet in episode four, A New Hope, um, and in the sequel trilogy. So that is really awesome to see. Uh, speaking of classic characters, the last one that I obviously need to cover is Lando Calrissian, played by Donald Glover. And uh, I think Donald Glover killed this role. I mean, I keep seeing other reviewers kind of saying the same thing, and I can't really fault them for it. I mean, Donald Glover just absolutely destroys this role. He doesn't seem exactly like Billy Dee Williams, but at the same time, he kind of does. He, he just really embodies a young Lando Calrissian. Like, if I were to close my eyes and be like, what would Lando look like when he was young and how would he act? It would be like that. So, it was really well acted really well written, um, and I, I just appreciated the amount of care and respect that went into portraying Lando. So now that we've talked about the classic characters, let's get into some of the new characters and how I felt about them. Uh, Woody Harrelson's Beckett was a character that I was a little bit nervous about because I'd been hearing some reports that maybe he wasn't very good from some people who had reviewed the movie earlier. Um, and for me, personally, I, I didn't have a very big problem with Beckett. I thought that he was a good character. It was fun to see the way he interacted with Han, uh, the way he kind of rubbed off on Han, and, and how that kind of caused Han's character to grow. I, I, I liked him. I, I don't have much else to say besides, like, Woody Harrelson played a solid character. Another new character was Amelia Clark's Kira, and that was one, whenever I saw it in the trailer, I was like, oh no. Uh-oh. I don't think I'm like that. And again, I, I thought she was good. She didn't blow me away, kind of like Beckett, uh, but I didn't hate it either. I was just kind of like, okay, you were a serviceable character. And, and I will say that, that she was a bit of a deeper character than I was expecting. And her connection to Han 
was one that was more meaningful than I was expecting, so good on them for that. And lastly, Paul Bettany playing the villain uh, named Dryden Voss was cool. Um, Dryden Voss kind of reminded me of like a Bond villain, where it's like this rich guy who's really smart and cunning, and you don't want to cross him, but he's like really charming at the same time. He was kind of that, and I thought that it was cool. Um, and, and again, it was just kind of there, like it was serviceable, it wasn't amazing. It's not going to be something that a year from now I, I'm going to be comparing other villains. Like, wow, that was like Dryden Voss from Solo. It's kind of, kind of forgettable, but it wasn't terrible either. It was just kind of there. Talking about storyline in this movie, for me it was sort of like a upward trajectory from the beginning where it was just getting more and more and more exciting. It kind of hit a lull in the middle for me. And then the end, it, it shot up again, and it was really exciting. Um, the beginning was really, really well written, and I think that that was one of the flaws with the movie, is that they set up the beginning so well that you're kind of sitting there in your theater seat, like, oh my gosh, am I about to just be, like, blown away and proven wrong? And then the middle, they kind of just hit some snags, and you can tell that this movie went through some director changes and uh, reshoots, and issues during proje during production because it kind of shifts tones a lot um, and some of the story threads kind of go in and out almost like while they were like editing it together they were having to remember what threads they were having to uh, put the answering scenes to throughout so it, it was kind of awkward in the middle and then at the end it kind of hits its stride again. There were moments in the movie that had the Star Wars magic uh, where I, I felt like I was watching a saga film like one of the classic ones especially in the scenes where the character of Han is interacting with Chewie um, and they get behind the wheel of the Millennium Falcon. Then the John Williams score kicks in and, and, and it just puts goosebumps up your arm you know like those were the parts in the movie where as a Star Wars fan and just as a, a general movie going uh, audience member, I was sitting there going, wow, like this is more than I bargained for. My biggest flaw with the movie was a character that a lot of other people have been giving mixed reviews, so I hope that I don't just like offend you, but Lando's droid L3, I just, I absolutely hated that character. I'm not gonna lie. Um, there were just moments in the movie theater where I just kind of kept just putting my hand over my mouth to prevent myself from saying something out loud because I, I, I was not happy with that character. Um, the one-liners that the droid kept saying and the attitude that the droid had was just like not Star Wars to me at all. Um, and maybe I'm the only one who felt that way. You know, comment down below, what do you think of L3? Am I crazy? I, I did not like that droid. And that's about all that I can think about saying without talking about spoilers. Overall, I think that Solo, A Star Wars Story was serviceable. It was about on par with Rogue One, A Star Wars Story in terms of quality for me. Uh, maybe a little bit less on some days and maybe a little bit more on some days. It really is one of those movies uh, where I think it's going to depend a lot on the mood that you're in whenever you watch it. Um, and that'll determine a lot about what you think about it. So this might require some repeat viewings. But yeah, guys, we're going to jump into some spoilers. So if you don't want to listen to them, uh, you can leave during this part of the video. Or if you want to get spoiled, I mean, that's up to you, man. Let's do it. Okay, I'm just going to jump into, like, the mother of all spoilers. At the very end, whenever the crime boss is revealed to be Darth Maul, I just wanted to punch the theater seat in front of me. I mean, it would have been super inappropriate to do that, but like that's what I wanted to do because I was so freaking excited. Darth Maul is one of my favorite Star Wars characters of all time, and I'm sure a lot of people would say that as well, but I mean, whenever The Phantom Menace came out, um, I was like a little kid. I mean, I, I was like the prime age to look at that character on toy store shelves, and just think like, wow, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. With the, with the double-bladed lightsaber and just the way he fought, holy crud. So for them to bring him back into the movies, because he's already been back in the animated Clone Wars and Rebels TV series and stuff like that, but I always thought that was kind of like a cop-out of like, yeah, they can bring him into a kid's TV cartoon, but in, unless he is in a solid movie, I'm not going to get excited about him being back. Uh, so to see him in the movie portrayed by the same actor who played him in The Phantom Menace was so legit and it made me happy that Disney is acknowledging like, hey, the prequels happen. Because even though a lot of people hate the prequels, 
you know what, they were 10 years of a lot of our lives, and a lot of us did like them, like me. Like, I, I, I overall enjoyed the prequels, which, get your pitchforks ready, I know a lot of people hate that, but I was just the prime age to enjoy them, and now I have a lot of nostalgic feelings towards those films. And after I saw this movie, I got my Darth Maul bank out, and it's like sitting on my desk now, so. Cheers to memories. One thing that I did like about this movie was that I think they understood the audience's investment in certain new characters whenever they decided to start killing them off. Like whenever Beckett's crew died, like towards the beginning of the movie, like a lot of those crew members died, I wasn't necessarily very upset because I kind of knew that the more screen time that those characters got, the less that like Han and Chewie and Lando were gonna ultimately get. So I'm kind of glad that they killed them off. Whenever Beckett died at the end, I was honestly kind of surprised about that, but the way that they did it was so cool because I think it honored Han's character a lot because he totally would have been the person to just shoot him in the middle of while he's giving his speech. And that was, again, one of those moments in the movie where I think they really channeled the Star Wars magic and you're like, yep, that's what Han Solo would do. That's awesome. And whenever Han and Chewie meet and they throw Han down into the pit, and it's sort of like the Rancor in uh, Episode Six, The Last Jedi, and uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this monster going to be? And it turns out to be Chewbacca. I was like, dude, I should have seen that coming. I mean, what the heck, I should have seen it. But uh, that, that was just such a great way for them to meet. I know that like in the expanded universe and in the novels, they uh, had like a slightly different way of meeting. I was a fan of this in the movie. I think that that was really well written. And I thought that like the way they kind of teamed up to break out, um, and then after that, their their friendship just kind of goes upward from there. It's just really cool, and, and it does add layers to like episode four, New Hope, later on whenever you're watching that film. Uh, one last spoiler that I will bring up is that it was really awesome at the end whenever they mentioned uh, Tatooine and Jabba the Hutt, and they're kind of linking threads between this movie and the main line trilogy. And I know they just came out like today and said that they they don't plan on making a sequel to Solo, a Star Wars story, uh, but it's still cool to have those threads there um, and to see how Han ultimately ended up, you know, getting into debt with Jabba the Hutt um, and ending up on Tatooine where he picks up with Luke and Obi-Wan later. So yeah, guys, I thought that Solo, a Star Wars story was fun. Uh, I probably plan on watching it again. Pro not in theaters. It's gonna be on Blu-ray later. I'll rent it. Uh, that's about what I felt about it. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't wonderful either. Uh, but I I'm not disappointed. So that's one thing I can say. I'm not disappointed by it. So I'll take it. But in the future, I really hope that Lucasfilm listens to some of the fans' complaints because at this point, it really is like a restaurant that keeps sending out the same dish after we've told them several times it's undercooked. So please, Lucasfilm, listen to the fans. They're your best customers. Come on. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you'd like to keep up with more content in the future, you can subscribe right here. I make weekly entertainment tech and review videos, and I just nerd out all the time. So if you fit the description of someone that wants to nerd out all the time, this is the place to be. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great one.